Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks so much for tuning in for another one of these Sunday concerts. It's my 20th concert. I'm so proud of myself um, for making it this far. And thank you to everybody who's stuck by and listened and to anybody new who's listening today. Um, today's programme is three works, four works, four works. Um, and I'm just going to start off by playing the first of them. Um, for anybody who's been to my concerts, either solo concerts or concertos, you've probably heard this before. Um, but it's a little throw in extra for today. <laughs> Cyril Scott. Um, it's, it's a piece that I've fallen massively in love with and it's something that I love. I love performing it anyway but it's a very useful thing to throw out for if you need an encore for something because it's so short and so brilliant. I think it, for me it's, it's certainly the best um, bumblebee in music that I've heard. Um, and I discovered that piece because somebody, um, an old friend of my piano teacher, had been a violinist and he died and he'd left his music and asked his wife to make sure that the music went to somebody who would treasure it, use it maybe. And, and so I was invited by my piano teacher to go and have a look at a little bit of music, which turned out to be I mean, boxes and boxes and boxes. And it was full of music that's now somewhat gone out of fashion. So people like Cyril Scott, who were who were really big in their day, who people just don't perform their music anymore, and there's no reason why because it's fantastic. So that music was amongst it, and um, I wish I got my music out of the cupboard because it's so old and so held together by very brown sticky tape, and it looks beautiful. Um, but you can't play off it because bits fall off it. So anyway, that was Bumblebees. When I was looking for music to keep me going so that I had some more new music to play because um, I didn't really want to keep repeating stuff that I already knew. Um, I discovered on Shot's website, um, the publisher, that there's another piece by Cyril Scott that I had no idea about called Idyll. Um, and so I ordered it and it arrived last week and it's gorgeous. Um, so I thought I'd play that for you today. Um, it's... <laughs> It kind of reminds me of Lark Ascending, and I know I shouldn't say that. Um, it's, it was written a few years later, so um, I, when I first looked, I think, oh, I wonder if I wonder if Vaughan Williams nicked it. Um, but he didn't, because he wrote his first. It's full of those sorts of ideas. It flits between these very serene moments, and then these, these kind of, almost like a bird trying to, trying to fly forth. Um, and like I say, it's utterly beautiful. And by the way, hello everybody who's um, sending messages. Um, Hi guys. <laughs> so it's really nice being able to see them popping up, but I can't look while I'm playing. Anyway, so this is Cyril Scott and his idol. Thank you. 
enjoyed that. That was Cyril Scott's Idol, and it was written in 1928, so just a little bit later than um, than Lark Ascending, Paul Williams' Lark Ascending, which I um, don't know if you could hear the kind of Lark Ascendingness to it that I find in it. But um, yeah, a glorious piece, and one that I am really delighted to have discovered and will be programming in the future. This was a difficult program to program, if that makes sense, just because it was hard to figure out what order to play the pieces in. And in fact, um, it didn't seem right to start with Sarah's piece, which is the next piece, because it felt like it needed just a little bit more stillness before it started. Um, it feels wrong to play anything after the Bach's Chacon, so that's why that's at the end. Um, a bit, it just, it, I like I like to finish these concerts with some sort of uppishness, um, but that didn't seem to be possible today. So so you're finishing with Bach Chacon. So in fact, I didn't need to put my music away because I need it for the next piece, which is Sarah Jenkins. I I'm very very lucky to have lots of incredible composers in my life, and the wonderful Sally Beamish got in touch very recently, um, a couple of weeks ago, I think to say that um, she was, um, she wanted to let me know about a young composer, Sarah Jenkins, who had written an utterly beautiful piece for unaccompanied violin. I thought, yay, another one. Um, so we got in touch and um, Sally put us in touch and, and Sarah sent me the music for this and oh, it's so beautiful. And um, it's called Tincture of the Skies and it was written is a joint a joint um, commission um, for the uh, associate leader of, of um, BBC Welsh um, Welsh Orchestra and he w it was Nick Whiting the the associate leader who was leading when I was recording Sibelius with them at the beginning of the year and he's such a legend he's such an incredible musician and player and just all round good egg and um, so it's lovely to be able, there's a video of him playing it. Um, a recording of him playing it and it was written at the beginning of the year and um, so it was it, it hasn't had a live premiere so this is its live premiere which is very exciting um, I'll read you um, what Sarah's written about the music at least I'll try to because I'm really bad at poetry this piece is inspired by the following passage written by Alexander Pope in 1888 dipped in the richest tincture of the skies, where light disports in ever-mingling dyes, while every beam new transient colours flings, colours that change whenever they wave their wings. The piece aims to explore the idea of imperceptible changes in colour. The sky is constantly changing, mingling colours, light, darkness and travelling clouds, yet there is such stillness and peace to be found there. And I think she definitely, definitely does that. And um, so, yeah, this is, oh, it's so beautiful. This, I'm really excited about premiering this. Um, but preferably with shoulder rest, this keeps happening in these concerts. It can't deal with the lights. Um, so yeah, this is Tincture of the Skies by Sarah Frances Jenkins.
isn't it beautiful? That's Sarah Jenkins and her tincture of disguise. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sending me the music. And um, I hope I hope you enjoyed that um, and that I got it about right. It's, okay, sorry, I'm just seeing all of the, the messages um, popping up. And yeah, all, all of the people that you must know, um, like <laughs> Zary and Jasper, yeah, it is, they're right, it's utterly beautiful. Um, so, yes, the last piece in the programme, which is probably at least half the programme in itself, um, is Bach's Almighty Chacon from the D minor partita. I have played this before um, on Good Friday um, in these concerts. I played it, I played the whole partita for Good Friday. But I thought that's a long time ago and you'll forgive me for playing it again. It's um, I know Paul is watching, listening. Um, I know you tweeted the other day that um, it's your Desert Island Disc piece. And in fact, you're not alone. It's it's the piece that I've been most asked to play, to program in these concerts. Um, I get occasional messages through from people saying, please, will you play this? So I thought it was all right to play it for a second time. And Bach, I mean, you, if you were listening last week and heard the Bieber, um, Bieber's Passacaglia, um, is a precursor to this work and I think, I, I honestly think that they're, they're linked in some ways that Bach must have known about Bibis Passicalia. Um, Bibis Passicalia is, I think, also 65 variations and it's variations on this. So very, very simple, four falling notes. Bach's Chacon is also is 64 variations um but his bass line that he bases this on so it um a passicalia and a chicane are, are very similar um and it's just a rep repeated bass line um that keeps going throughout the work and there are variations almost over the top um bach's bass line is this <laughs> to do more with it. I mean, Bieber is already incredible. Um, I got told off using the word incredible too much, and it's true, I, see, I use it all the time. Um, I'm gonna try not to say it anymore, but it's very, very wonderful um, what Bieber does. And Bach is then in a whole new world, and he takes it to a different place. And so this, this chacon starts off in the minor, and then about halfway through, he moves to the major in the most sublime moment in music. Um, and then it just gets all very sad, very dark again, about four fifths of the way through um, and finishes in that place. And it's, it's just extraordinary music. I think I'm just going to read you what Brahms wrote about the Chacon because he says it best than anybody. On one stave, for such a small instrument, Bach writes a whole world of the deepest thoughts and most powerful feelings. If I imagined that I could have created, even conceived the piece, I am sure that the excess of excitement and earth-shattering experience would have driven me quite mad. So it's Brahms writing to Clara Schumann, I think. Um, <laughs> it's a good job it doesn't happen when I'm playing, doesn't it? So, you get 65 variations and it's just the most extraordinary music. So this is Bach's Chacon.
was the Chaconne from Bach's second partitura in D minor um, and the final work on today's program. Um, it's funny, you play things in different situations, even in the very same living room, um, and they feel so different. And I can remember recording the Chaconne um, fairly near the beginning of lockdown and having a to I mean, I cried. I cried for hours after playing it. And now it just today feels so different and still wonderful and still glorious. Just every day is a different day. Thank you so much to everybody for listening. As always, um, these concerts are free, but if you're able to make a donation, there's a donation link for my PayPal at the bottom of, of the video. Um, and yeah, as always, we're still workless, jobless. Um, maybe in maybe in September I get some work. Um, so anything, you know, the price of a concert ticket, cup of tea, whatever, would be so gratefully received. So thank you for that. And um, I'll be back on Sunday. Um, have yet to figure out what to play, but I'll play you something. Thank you so much as always. Bye.